Right, next up we've got Gary Clark. Gary is Hull, born and bred and very proud of it. Uh, he's written two books actually, From Boothery to Wembley and this is The Best Trip. <laughs> he's also contributed to the fanzine scene and uh, he's an active member of Hull Trucks Act 3 and the Script Writers Group and he's very passionate about Hull City. Gary Clark. <laughs> Good evening. My first one was written this week. I saw two aeroplanes land. One has some sulking footballers, it has some dead soldiers on it. These are my thoughts on it. England. England, my England, the land of my birth. Fiercely loyal, hats fit to burst. There's more to being English than singing a World Cup song. Think of the poor fuckers in Afghanistan. As our troops are dying for some forgotten cause, eleven other paid wankers are lapping up the applause. For sulking and posing and losing 4-1, these are the bastards our roots are pinned on. There are men in this well fighting for civil rights. All you give a shit for is shagging someone's wife. But why do we always fall flat on our faces? Is it all just to sell a few newspapers? The media mongols then fight over the scraps. I've always to blame for making us look twats. Is it really important who wins a World Cup? When all's said and done, who gives a fuck? <laughs> Think yourselves lucky you're not in Afghanistan, getting your balls blown off by the Taliban. Until one MP's son gets blown to smithereens, they'll never understand what this war really means. But we are English, for St George we fight on. False hopes, false pride, yes looking to blame someone. For the reason the world hates us, yet they all want to come to the land of milk and honey and some to earn a crust. But that's what's important, living your life, not pinning your hopes on that load of shite. Because when they put you in that box and your number is up, I'll tell you now, it looks like Wayne Rooney that won't give a fuck. <laughs> I've got a small job now working with the council, taking um, <coughs> handicapped kids, you know, to and from homes and foster kids and so on. And, you know, these are my thoughts on that. Undeserving heroes. Sometimes I wish I had a hero, and sometimes I think it's quite sad. Someone to look up to, wishing I had what they have. Heroes can be disappointing, especially to a six year old lad, all blonde hair and innocence, sat quite in the back of a taxi cab to spend an hour with his dad. Who is there to meet him at the council day centre? And it tugs at your heart to see them lovely embrace. A tear in each eye brings a lump to your throat. He's painted a picture which he clings to his chest of a home with a garden and the sun in the sky. A child's wishful thinking how his life ought to be. If only he wasn't part of a malfunctioning family. Dad has a new tattoo made in Hull proudly across his neck. Brand new Ben Sherman, black and white small check. Nothing for his son, no presents to give, and before the tears have dried, he wants to be on his way. His little boy unaware, as his dad looks at his watch, the novelty we see in his son already worn off. So heroes can be disappointing to a six-year-old lad as his dad rushes off. I love you, son, with a hollow sound. His weekly duty done, the one hour a week he spends with his son. Back in the taxi, sat on alone, counting off the minutes till next time he can see his dad, an undeserving hero or selfish to the core. Until his son is older, he won't want to see him anymore. I live in Hull, you know, but once I moved away, for three years I came back. I went to Cottingham. <laughs> <laughs> this is called the suburbs. Kingston upon Hull, you don't want to live there, said the condescending old biddy at the end of the phone with a tone in her voice that cuts to the bone. Already I'm a loser and she hasn't seen my face. A feeling you get used to when you come from this place. I feel like rubbish when spoken to like this, drummed into me daily since I was a kid. Who do these people think they are with a semi in Cottingham and a company car? 
I lived there myself once, some time ago. Returned to Hull, a place that I know. And I put the house on the market, and I made 100 grand. We see the snotty nose telephone, used to have snapped off my hand. All prim and proper, I showed them around. Double glazing, new carpets, and that kitchen cost a few pound. As I lied through my teeth and politely smiled, I'm so pleased you found us and finally dialed. It's made for you, I can see it in your face. You'll fit in here well here, with all the other fakes. But you cannot say that when you live in the sticks. You smile at us so sweetly, because that's all it takes. They are buying a postcode on the right side of town. What does it matter if the house is falling down? As long as they ever see it, that place they call Hull, people so shallow, they believe their lives are now full. Educated but stupid, and full of their own shit. I believed it myself once and I swallowed every bit. My life would be enhanced if I moved up the road to a place so leafy and liberal, I was told. Yeah, if you want to be old before your time, but nobody told me it was riddled with crime. So I'm back in Hull, amongst the dirt and the ground, with people who I trust, and the people who I have time. And I may not be posh, living in a house called in Harvey, but paying 300 grand for that, that must have been by me. I've been there and done it, and it filled me with dread, but living in the suburbs, I'd soon be dead. <laughs> Last one is called the Farmer's Market. It's about the Farmer's Market in Hull. I've seen more convincing farmers on Emmerdale than them. <laughs> and this is it. I saw a Farmer's Market on Princess Dockside. Lots of free range fed chickens and organic pork pies. But how long have farmers made plastic tractors for kids and little paper aeroplanes that fly around on sticks? It looks a bit desolate. The traders bought stiff. Not many farmers and not for a quid. The fat and the skinny, the big and the tall, all munching on burgers no one's bought from their stall, pushing tan sides with snotty nosed beans, with the umbrella selling farmer hoping it rains. The city looks scruffy, the people run down. Who's taking all the money out of this town? The pretend farmers will soon pack up and go, selling tales of a city where the people all look poor. Back to their farms on the Orchard Park Road, then shopping at Tesco's for more stock to unload. On the unsuspecting public all eager to buy, not very fresh produce at prices sky high. So they're not real farmers in the centre of Hull, and that black sheep farming to go to our school. Do you think we're all stupid, gullible and daft, to pay nearly a father for that piece of old tat? We may not get out much, we all may look poor. But passing themselves off for farmers, it's enough to make you ruin. Yeah.